Welcome to this second video on systems analysis for problem formulation and analysis. In the first video, I explained the use of systems analysis and in particular the system diagram for a mono actor situation. In the second video, I will illustrate this approach using a simplified example we call wind power. Let's assume your client is the Dutch Ministry of Economic Affairs, in particular the Department of Energy. The Ministry wants to enlarge the fraction of renewable energy generation and would therefore like to increase the amount of wind energy at sea. They are also concerned about the affordability of power to industry and to the general population and about the security of power supply. So let's assume the demarcation of the problem and the analysis of objectives has led to the identification of three criteria. The security of supply, the percentage of offshore power generation and the costs of energy provision. We now reason backwards to explore what factors have an influence on these system outcomes. Clearly, the offshore percentage is positively influenced by the installed wind power capacity at sea, a key system factor. Capacity at sea, in turn, is determined by both the size and the number of wind farms at sea. The Ministry of Economic Affairs cannot itself invest in new wind farms, but hopes to stimulate investors and energy companies by providing subsidies and by expediting the granting process of licenses as needed. We therefore consider these as means of the Ministry and place them on the left side of the diagram. As a result, we have identified a key pathway through which the client can influence his primary objective, the fraction of power generated offshore. But does this mean the diagram is complete? Surely no. As I explained in the first video, we need to check for completeness and consistency by iterating. As a next step, we therefore ask whether any other factors can affect the client's objectives. Clearly, the power generation capacity of a wind farm depends on the average wind speed at the sea location. This is a factor that cannot be directly influenced by the Ministry, so we consider it as an external factor and place it at the top, outside the system boundary. Next, we reason forward and ask whether use of the means will have any relevant side effects or impacts on any of the other criteria. The number and size of wind farms at sea affect investment costs and therefore we add this influence on the overall costs of energy provision. Now we reason backwards from the costs again and ask whether other factors will influence overall cost. We note that investment costs will, among other things, depend on the water depth at the chosen location. Moreover, the choice of location will affect transport costs. The larger the distance to a land connection point, the higher the transport costs. Therefore, the government may wish to influence the location choice, in particular the distance to the coast. For the time being, we add influencing the distance to the coast as a means to our diagram. But note, the Ministry of Energy cannot fully by itself determine the location choice. Other ministries, notably the Ministry of Infrastructure and Environment, have strong interests and power over which, which locations are permissible. We complete our provisional exploration of factors affecting costs and add the influence of scale advantages. The larger the size of the wind parks, the larger the scale advantage, and this may help reduce average cost. Last but not least, we ask whether changes in the system may influence the security of supply. We should take into account that the increase of the percentage of wind power may affect security of power supply. Wind speed varies and wind may 
even be totally absent at times, and then no wind power can be generated. As a result, the balance of power demand and supply will be negatively affected if the offshore power fraction gets large, and this will negatively affect security of supply. We include these influences in our diagram, but we also observe that available power storage capacity and the number of international connections may positively affect the balance. And we add these as well as external factors, as the Ministry cannot directly affect their development. We could go on and add more detail and sophistication to the diagram, but I stop here as the main purpose of this video is to illustrate what we can learn from a diagram like this. I therefore return to the uses of a system diagram introduced in the first video. Does our problem owner face an intrinsic dilemma? The answer is clearly yes. Following the highlighted links in the diagram, it appears that security of supply is always negatively affected if the primary objective, more wind power, is improved. And of course, also costs of power supply may rise as more investment in wind farms are made. Are available actions effective? Let's again look at the diagram. All the highlighted links, highlighted in orange, show that the problem owner's means do influence all the goals. But all of them cannot be achieved at the same time. Based on the diagram, the following scorecard results. It shows that use of the available means will help increase the fraction of offshore power, but it does not specify to what extent this effect will occur. It also shows that the influence on costs of these means is not clear. Furthermore, it appears that two of the three main criteria are indeed sensitive to external influences. How big that influence could be and whether the client's goals could be attained without taking action cannot be established based on the information included in the diagram alone. Please watch the tutorial on future exploration to learn more about this aspect. Are there any important knowledge gaps? Yes, several I would say. Again, critical influences about which little is known are highlighted in this diagram. We only have a general idea that subsidies will have a positive effect on decisions by investors and energy companies who need to invest in wind farms at sea. But we don't know the magnitude of the influence. We also don't know to what extent the external factors will affect the criteria. Also, the impacts of location choice on costs need to be further explored. Concluding, the simple system analysis in this example leads to the following observations. The client indeed faces an intrinsic dilemma. He by himself cannot achieve both security of supply and a high fraction of wind power generation at the same time. The client has a number of means that can contribute to achieving some of his objectives, but it is not sufficiently clear to which extent these means will be effective, and this may also depend on the number of external factors. The client depends on other actors, for example those who influence location choice, investment decisions and power network structures. To enable us to better help our client, more insight is needed in the influences and factors listed here. Please note that the example, as I have discussed this, is a very simplified one. In reality, more and other relations need to be taken into account, and the system analysis would need to be based on a more thorough study of the factors and mechanisms determining system behavior. Discussions with the client, literature study and consultation of experts will help in this endeavor.
I have limited myself to the basic principles that will help you structure and relate the different elements of a problem analysis. I have focused on the methodological and conceptual aspects of the analysis and shown how a relatively simple analysis can help in identifying key features of a problem situation. This type of analysis provides a starting point for further research and analysis. An exploration of possible futures is needed, as well as a more systematic and thorough actor and network analysis. As I said in the beginning, the diagram I have discussed represents the perception of a single actor, the problem owner. I have only taken his or her perceptions, objectives and means into account. However, in the reality of multi-actor policy making, others may be affected by the problem owner's actions and the problem owner depends on other actors for reaching his goals. These other actors may have different perceptions on the problem situation and different objectives that should be considered as well. I will therefore take a multi-actor perspective on the use of systems analysis in the next video. Thank you for your attention.